Reckoners, Huntmasters, Thrag Tusks, Pilgrims. You know, it's a mid-range deck. I mean, I guess we'll see if this version is better than, you know, the Naya Blitz version, or if maybe it just matches up better against the Naya I was going to say, I think, I think it's, like, slightly worse against the field, but way better in those types of matchups. The Naya Humans, the Naya Blitz, the, uh... Probably, it probably matters a lot on who's on the play and who's on the draw, too, as we see uh, both players laying out their opening seven cards. We'll see who's on the play and who's on the draw here. Uh, Matthew picking up his cards first. So see, maybe a feeling. Even though our fir how fast our first match was, these guys are already in game three. Yeah. This shows Format's how, pretty quick. Yeah, shows how fast this format is. You see Matthew's hand, he's rearranging things. You see a Temple Garden in the front. I see, I see an Experiment 1. I see myself a Frontline Medic. And I think I see the Spicy card that I wanted to hide from you. But it's uh, I, I think he has to rally the peasants in his hand. Rally the peasants, the Innistrad common. Yes. Tell me more. It is two and a white, and your dudes get plus one plus zero. Oh? Try again. I lose. Plus two plus zero. Oh. Plus two plus zero. Oh? Flashback. Two and a red. I Instant. knew. I knew a flashback. We'll bring it up on it's the screen uh, for you. It's powerful. There it is. Basically, what Matthew's done here is these decks have been known to play one or more copies of Giant Growth, and he's electing to play Rally the Peasants instead, which I actually don't hate, because if you're trying to swarm your opponent, which this deck is actually trying to accomplish, this is a card that works well with that card. So Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, like, there is that sort of flex spot that, you know, sometimes there's Rampagers or Giant Growths or, or what have you, and why not a Rally the Peasants? I mean, you know, you would play a Glorious Anthem if you could. Yeah, I'd be definitely happy to play the Glorious Anthem in this deck. You don't find a Hamlet, Hamlet Captain in this deck, a card that is starting to pick up some, some traction on Magic Online, and we did see it a little bit earlier in the day, but it's not in this current list. This list is a lot more traditional. You find four copies of Frontline Medic, Burning Tree Emissary, Lightning Mauler, Mayor of Averbrook, Experiment 1, Boris Lee, Champion of the Parish, three Flynn of Force, three Thalias, one Gore Clan Rampager, four Searing Spears, and a Rally of Peasants. So a lot more traditional list, much like Nico Christensen's list from Grand Prix Quebec. And on the other side, Brian's deck has a lot of 4-ups. Experiment 1, Smiter, Boros Reckoner, Strangle Root Geist, Restoration Angel, Thrag Tusk, Avacyn's Pilgrim, 3 Flame Hip 4, 2 Hunt Master, 1 Arbor Elf, and 4 Domri Raid. No Searing Spears. Kind of interesting. You do see a mulligan to 5 from Brian Boston. While he was rearranging his deck really quickly, we did kind of catch a quick glimpse of two copies of Blasphemous Act are in. Yes, he has those in the sideboard, as well as the two other Huntmasters, which I have to assume are coming in, and then Oblivion Ring, probably maybe not coming in. Yeah, I feel like it's just a little too slow. Yeah, it's it's like okay, but um, probably not good enough, I would guess. Um, so let's talk about Mulligans. Brian Boss going to five. I think that's actually fine. Like, looking at this matchup, I think that uh, it's fairly easy for Brian to just play a smiter on two or three, and that be not enough to win, but enough to buy him enough time to draw out of his mulligan. Yeah, it might be enough time to draw out of his mulligan. I mean, so long as, as Matthew does not draw, you know, he has two copies of Fiend Hunter and three copies of Pacifism in the sideboard. You Oof, can, that's a lot. Yeah, you can almost guarantee the Pacifists are in. Maybe, or maybe the Fiend Hunter's in, maybe they're not, because, they, you know, we haven't seen the first two games, but Brian does have four copies of Dami Rod. He probably drew one at some point, and, you know, Fiend Hunter kind of gets blown up by that card. Yeah. Um, so you're not sure if the two Fiend Hunters are in. You can almost guarantee the three Pacifisms are in. So uh, we don't know if he has one in his opening hand or not right now, but, you know, that kind of blows up the idea of stabilizing with Locks and Spider, at least trying to undo your mulligan for a couple turns with that. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy. Winning from five rarely is. That's true. We've seen a couple of those as well. So Brian, you see his hand. He does actually have a Blivin Ring in his hand. You see a stomping around a flint of four. And you see Matthew is going to start by taking two via Temple Garden. And pass. And oh, no, it's he's an experiment one. actually going to play something. My mistake, yeah, my mistake. He plays an experiment <laughs> one. And his hand isn't bad, as you do see Avacyn's Pilgrim here. And Brian does that take is a two key, as well. So. That is a key uh, component to winning from five. Now he just needs to get some big creatures to sort of stabilize from the oncoming assault that he's about to... Uh, yeah, actually, Matthew's hand is 
It's good, but it's not great. Yeah, this isn't this isn't the best thing we've ever seen from Night Blitz. Obviously, this deck is capable of incredibly explosive draws. He does draw a Burning Tree Emissary for the turn. You see him thumbing back between that, his Experiment 1, his Rootbound Crag, which he's actually going to play this turn. And he's deciding, you know, do I want to do this and pump that and then play the Experiment 1, or do I just want to play the Experiment 1 and, and then go... And it next turn, yeah, but not have the 2-2 two -two in play. Yeah. yeah, so he's electing to just play the Emissary, make it a 2-2, two -two, and then... Uh, play the experiment one. We're assuming it's a 2-2. Two -two. And burn for one. Yeah. Burn for one indeed. <laughs> We're going to assume that that is a 2-2 two -two right now. There's not a it die is. on yeah, it. Yeah, there is. Currently, it's, but... it's camouflaged. It's a purple die. Oh, okay. So we do see a flint hoof boar here. We're hoping he didn't miss that evolved trigger. I, I, it, there's a die. Oh, okay. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. I see it's, it. it's purple on purple. Ideal. Yeah. For a camera. Yeah. It's not like we have big white ones right there on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to see a stomping ground come and play on tap. There is your frontline medic. Oof. That is going to pump both of those experiment ones. One and two, a two, two. One and two, a three, three. There There's our go. white die. Right. Now y'all can see it at home, and I can see it here in the booth. I just Zach killed there. I yelled. <laughs> it just felt right. <laughs> And so now Matthew is considering attacking with this. Yeah, whether he wants to trade off the four. experiment one. Would or... you attack or not? I do not. Just... I think that uh, you have battalion next turn. Um, your experiment one is generally going to be like at least trade for the boar, right? Okay. Um, but like if you can get a battalion to attack in, then it's obviously just way better. Well, there is an oblivion ring to kind of blow that strategy up. It takes care of the frontline medic. Matthew's going to untap and draw. We do know that he does have Mayor of Averbrook in his hand. You see a Boros Elite to draw for the turn it's to like go a along. Rally of the Peasants as well. Yeah, the Rally of the Peasants is the last card in his hand. So he can play two guys this turn. They will not evolve the, uh, excuse me, the, the uh, Experiment 1s, but they will make them bigger, which is what the Mayor is going to do. Because this creature type human ooze. Ooze. And so here come the idiots. See, now it's a 4-4, four -four, so... You don't have to trade with the Flint of Boar anymore. Yeah. It's... I don't know. Like, theoretically, you could try to trade it off the last turn to make sure that your 2-2s get in this turn if he has removal for Mayor, but he would have to have removal for Mayor and the uh, Frontline Medic. And on a Mulligan 5. Yeah, yeah, I like the way that Matthews played this game. So you're going to see the smaller Experiment 1 trade with the Flint of Boar. Going to come across there Experiment for 7. Experiment 2, if you will. Yeah, if, if you want. And then there is a Boros Elite post-combat. So Boros Elite is now threatening Battalion. Mare is threatening a flip here. And you see Brian's hand of Mountain the, Experiment 1 and yeah, Temple Garden. The awkward top deck, both in Constructed and Limited. Of experiment standard one. and Modern. <laughs> <laughs> the Evolve guy off the top in the late game is uh, never a pretty sight. Now Matthew's drawn a cliff top retreat to go along with that Rally of the Peasants. And, you know, Matthew is so far ahead in this game that he probably doesn't, he, he probably didn't need Rally of the Peasants to win, but it's just going to solidify things. Yep, it here. just closes the door. Yeah, as he can get in with all of his creatures here, and I think Rally of the Peasants will be enough to get through the last points of damage. He is just considering things here as Brian yeah, does. Yeah, like, if Brian out. has a removal spell, then, like, maybe he doesn't want to trade off his mayor for one of the creatures. You know, just considering all the possibilities, but... Knowing that Brian, we know that Brian has nothing, and uh, this is going to be the game. Man, this format's fast. It is fast. It is very, very fast. Uh, which makes it difficult to play decks like an Asper. Um, like an, just, like a, an unexpected results? Yeah. Just a, a lot of the strategies are kind of invalidated with how quick the format is. And just, yep. And, and you can almost attribute that almost alone to Burning Tree Emissary. But, I mean, it also... Experiment 1 and Boros Elite as well. Yeah. Yeah, there are some super powerful one-drops. Even, like, the red one-drops are very good. And Champion is just, like... I don't know. W earlier, um, Kyle Dembinski was in the booth, and he was playing a, a Blitz deck, and the first card on his list was Wildly Cattle, crossed out, Champion of the Paris. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And so there's your Rally the Peasants. I will Rally all the Peasants. And that is going to be a lethal Shrug, attack. scoop. And there's your handshake. Matthew Baum, after Brian Boss takes a mulligan to five, is your winner, two to one. He